During the summer, thousands of people are out enjoying lakes and rivers, but after it rains, that can be a risky proposition due to some sort of contamination. Allison Thielen from Root Pike Watershed Initiative and Network and Jake Fincher from Sweetwater are here to talk about this problem and what we should all be doing to try and help. Great to see you both. Thank you. Let's first talk about the stormwater runoff and things like that. that the problems and issues that that can create in, in area waterways. Yeah, well, as Brian said, it, we may be getting some rain later today. What happens when we have rain is the stormwater, it washes across our property. So it goes across our, our lawns and our driveways and into the gutters, which lead to the storm sewers. And then it ends up in our rivers and our lakes untreated. And so if people are swimmers and stuff, what sort of problems do they see with that? Oh, there's a multitude of problems. It can lead to shutting down beaches with yeah. E. coli, it can lead to health problems. And that's why it's important for all of us to care about this. This is because it's a human health issue as well as a environmental and a social issue. It's really not that hard for all of us, you know, in our own homes or around our own yards to, to make a real impact on this. Let's talk about some of the ways that you guys, uh, or should we, should we start with the rain barrel? Sure. No. Yes. All right, rain barrel. This yeah. I recognize. Tell us a little yeah. about this. So every time it rains, it obviously falls down on our roofs and then that goes into our gutters and then it can go over our lawns and our streets and like Allison said, picking up contaminants all along the way. So we can reduce the amount of water flowing over our lawns by capturing it and then letting it out later when it's not raining. Yeah. And there's and other things like it. rain gardens. Right. Right. All right. And then rain gardens, this is a, so you have a whole assortment of plants in here. Yeah. Yeah. These are all native plants. They're native to our area. And so, uh, you know, they'll grow quite well. They'll establish themselves. Um, a rain garden is a depressed garden uh, in your lawn where you, again, would have a downspout uh, leading into it. It would capture the rainwater and infiltrate it into the ground rather than letting it run off, collecting mm -hmm. anything from dog poop to fertilizers, pesticides, right. oil from the car. Which the plants love, but not so good for the water. Right. right. The <laughs> plants will filter it out. Yeah. All right. All right. What else? We know we have a couple of other tips here as well? Uh, there's small things like picking up uh, our grass clippings, our leaves, any trash that are in our yards, and just being conscious of what goes on our yards and in our streets eventually goes into our rivers and our lakes, and that can go untreated. So it has a direct impact on our rivers and our lakes. All right. Well, thank you both for being here and talking about these important reminders. And you can find more information on the best ways to keep lakes and rivers clean. You log on to our website, tmj4.com. We've got a link set up for you right there. How about that rain? Meteorologist